Over the years, Hermes has established itself in Europe by manufacturing high-quality equipment for coaches and horses. It was made for royalty, no less. This can also be seen in their logo. From the font style and the symbol down to the colors, the Hermes logo exudes nothing but class and prestige. But let me walk you through the meaning and history of the Hermes logo, including the brand's collection of bags. The corporation was established in the 19th century. Initially, it created riding accessories such as distinctive harnesses and luggage. And it became clear one day that the stock needed to be increased. The company is named after its creator, Thierry Hermes. A corporation with such a name could incorporate the god Hermes into its logo. The Hermes logo shows that the company made accessories for the chariots of wealthy people. The Hermes logo, on the other hand, has used the emblem with the depiction of a duck wagon with a horse since the 1950s. The horse-drawn carriage is meant to recall the company's beginnings as a saddlery business. The Hermes Kalesh insignia, on the other hand, was not created from scratch. Many sources claim that the designers were inspired by the drawing Le Duc Attel, Groom a Latente, Hitched Carriage, Waiting Room, by the French portrait and animal painter Alfred de Drew, 1810-1860, and it appears to be accurate. When we compare the two images, we can clearly see a striking resemblance. But why does Hermes use orange? This warm orange color, which is not Pantone approved, became synonymous with the house after World War II. It first appeared in 1942, when cream-colored cardboard boxes were in short supply. The supplier had to make do with what he had. It just happened to be orange. Now let's look at the evolution of the Hermes logo. The first Hermes logo was both attractive to the eye and obvious, emphasizing the company's line of business. The most prominent characteristics in the logo are a fine carriage, a neat, tidy horse buckled into the harness, and an attractive gentleman standing next to it. It also included the name of the brand and the city of origin beneath it. Hermes Paris logo has altered little over the years. Actually, the most visible modifications here are probably the graphic quality and line clarity. There was also some historical monogram variation. The Hermes emblem was woven together to produce a refined vignette with an H in the center. As we all know, ringlets and notches are only useful in a few instances. In most situations, they sabotage designers' ideas and pictures. A premium corporation with historical origins, on the other hand, would embrace such a solution. What does the logo symbolize, then? Hermes, like most gods in the Greek pantheon, had insignia that made him easily identifiable. What you might not realize is how Hermes' symbols have persisted into the 21st century. Most people associate Hermes with his distinctive winged sandals. While his footwear was clearly a component of his image in Greek art, his wings were surprisingly not his most prominent feature. Hermes had numerous other emblems that related to his roles as both a messenger and a shepherd, in addition to his wings. The lamb on his cap and as his symbol showed that he was a god of the countryside. Hermes might be recognized by his caduceus even more than by his attire and animals. This famous staff, which was topped with wings and wrapped with snakes, showed that he was Zeus' messenger and herald. If the caduceus looks familiar, it's because it's still employed today, albeit in an area unrelated to Hermes. In reality, while his wings are suited for messages and postal services, many of Hermes' most recognizable emblems have completely different meanings today. Greek gods had established symbolism and imagery long before the myths were written down by writers. These symbols, which were frequently acquired from ancient archetypes and pre-Greek cultures, were gradually assimilated into Greek art and mythology over hundreds of years. Hermes' symbols and imagery, on the other hand, varied frequently throughout Greek history. While certain gods can be recognized in their earliest depictions, the early forms of Hermes did not resemble the youthful man with wings that is commonly imagined. Hermes was depicted in the Archaic period as an elderly god with a full beard and serious visage, similar to Zeus or Poseidon. However, over time, his image evolved into that of a gorgeous, youthful god with lithe features and a fully beardless face. The older version of Hermes, on the other hand, was frequently kept in the Herma. These boundary stones were originally simple stone marks that were eventually replaced by stone or bronze pillars topped with the god's visage. Even when the younger Hermes became more popular, the top of the Herma still showed a god with a beard. The figure of Hermes on boundary and road signs represented his position as the god of travelers and messengers. It also represented his capacity to traverse borders, both on land and between realms. These Hermes occasionally included phallic iconography, a relic of the god's old relationship with fertility and the birth of new life. While his status as a fertility god had waned, iconography such as his bearded visage persisted in some situations. But how is Hermes depicted? Hermes was sometimes depicted holding a lamb, alluding to his status as a shepherd god. 
He got this job because, as a baby, he stole his half-brother Apollo's cattle. His affinity for country life was also reflected in his unusual hat. The wide-brimmed hat, or patassos, that Hermes frequently wears is unique among the gods but would have been typical among Greeks. The patassos was a type of headdress worn by rural peasants and shepherds to keep the sun out of their eyes. Hermes also wore unusual sandals, called pedala. They were fashioned of exquisite gold and were meant to allow him to travel at amazing speeds. Both his sandals and headdress were frequently depicted in Greek art with little wings on the sides. Even though this wasn't always a part of the god's image, it became so popular that he was sometimes shown with small wings growing out of his head and ankles in later times. His characteristic cloak was also thrown across his shoulders or over his arm. It possessed the ability to bestow invisibility, allowing him to move throughout the planet unnoticed. The caduceus, on the other hand, was Hermes' most recognizable sign. This distinctive staff was wrapped in two intertwined snakes and was frequently topped with a sphere or wings. It was both a powerful magical tool that could put people to sleep and a sign of his job as Zeus' messenger. While other gods, particularly messengers like Iris, used a similar staff, it was most typically identified with Hermes. Even though it didn't have wings or lambs, the caduceus was still known as the messenger god symbol. Meanwhile, there is a modern interpretation of the Hermes symbol. While many of Hermes' emblems survived into the modern era, they did so in surprising ways. The wings of the god were added later to his art, but they became a strong symbol of how fast and reliable his messengers were. As a result, they were an obvious choice for many modern postal and delivery service logos. Businesses in the 21st century still use parts of the old image of Hermes to stand for speed and accuracy, from delivering packages to delivering flowers. In the modern world, the caduceus has an interesting association. It is frequently connected with medical practice. This is not due to any myth about Hermes. His caduceus is frequently confused with a Sclepius rod, which had only one snake and lacked the wings and sphere at the top. In ancient Greece, the rod of Asclepius was the sign of physicians, and only the most highly trained could wear it. When doctors kept using this method through the Middle Ages and into the modern day, it was thought that they were using Hermes' staff. So, the symbol of heralds and messengers was mistakenly thought to be a sign of medicine, and it is still used that way today. Today, the caduceus is more accurately utilized as a symbol of business than it was in ancient Greece. Hermes was a patron of both traders and thieves, and he oversaw the movement of goods and people across borders. Let's take a look at some of the bags produced by the Hermes brand. Number 1, Picaton Bag. This was inspired by a nose bag for a horse to feed while walking. With raw edges and no lining, this bag was simple and functional. Number 2, Hoda Kuroi's Bag. This is Hermes' oldest bag, dating back to 1900. It was a particularly built bag with a high trapezoid shape for riders to carry their saddles or other equipment, and it is the closest product to today's bags. Number 3, the trim bag. In the days of horses and carriages, this was packed with hay and placed around the necks of horses as a mobile manger. Hermes revisited this mini picnic kit in 1958 and transformed it into a ladies' hold all. The original hook was also turned into a belt buckle by the fashion brand. Number 4, Evelyn. Evelyn Bertrand the head of the Hermes writing department at the time, decided to offer grooms a leather carry-all for their brushes, sponges, and so on. The bag that bears her name featured air holes and was in the shape of an H placed in a horseshoe oval. Number 5, Gypsy Air Bag. Jean-Paul Gaudier opted to accompany his AW 2008 collection with a bag that spoke of nature and hunting and was inspired by the original Hermes riding bags. Number 6, Saca de Peches, Medicaterina. The English Maritime Archaeology Group discovered the wrecked ship Frau Medicaterina in the 1970s. They discovered rolls of leather in pristine shape within. Hermes obtained some of this leather in 1993 and created this Depeches, one of the house's iconic designs, using leather that had lain at the bottom of the sea for more than 200 years. Number 7, Sacmolette Bag. An overnight bag was first described during the Renaissance period. Originally tied by a cord, a Parisian maker devised a locking iron clasp known as a foyer for the overnight bag. He added two handles and a base to make it stand on its own. This piece of luggage influenced Hermes to design the Millet bag in the 1920s. Number 8, Sac de Peche. This is essentially a men's school bag satchel. Depeches, or dispatches, were the newest news and information. This bag was designed in 1928 to transport these documents. Hermes is still the most popular for bespoke orders, and you may have any number of pouches in any size. Number 9, Lindy Bag. This purse, designed by Frederick Vidal, 
had handles on the smaller sides, allowing it to fold in on itself. Simply grasping the Hermes saddle rivet with the thumb and index finger opens the bag. This is one of the most successful stories in the history of the fashion house. Number 10, the Paris Bombay bag. This is a village doctor's bag that has been transformed into a modern carry-all. This bag was designed in 2008, the year of Indian fantasies. It has big sides that are joined to long, fine handles. Number 11, plume sack. This bag was inspired by a blanket holder that was popular in the 1920s. It was one of Hermes' first bags made of soft, unlined leather. It is created from the inside out and then turned out to create a lovely ladylike purse. Number 12, Kelly Handbag. This was invented around 1930 and got its name after Grace Kelly employed it as a barrier against photographers and the image was featured on the cover of Time magazine. A beautiful handbag with the famed Hermes clasp. Number 13, Birkin Handbag. On a journey from Paris to London in 1983, Jane Birkin sat next to Jean-Louis Dumas, the director of Hermes. She dumped her Hermes diary and papers all over the place. She declared that no purse had ever had enough pockets to hold all of her paperwork. This is a huge bag that was both robust and attractive, and it quickly became one of the most sought-after designs in the world. Number 14, Bolide Bag. Originally, the term bolide signified a meteor, but in the 20th century, the French referred to fast new vehicles as bolides. In 1923, Emile Hermes designed this bag for a buddy who was a car enthusiast. He discovered the zipper in America and linked it to the bolide, and so the bag as we know it was born. Number 15, the Vero Clutch. In 1938, the clutch bag was invented. After Andy Warhol's Muse Ultraviolet returned the one Andy had previously purchased for her to Hermes, the house decided to produce a new version with a silver and palladium bolt. Number 16, Constance. The bag was named after the designer's daughter, Constance, who was born in 1959. The bag may be worn over the shoulder or held by the side, thanks to an H-shaped fastening and a clever adjustable strap. Hermes has a story to it that many other fashion houses can't even begin to compete with, with so many wondrous stories and such an illustrious background. The fact that their beautiful bags are still in high demand shows how well-designed and high-quality the fashion house is. Meanwhile, here are some Hermes facts you didn't know. 1. Hermes is derived from the Greek god of messengers and commerce. 2. The house has been in operation for 177 years, beginning as a harness and saddle maker. 3. There are 315 unique Hermes boutiques worldwide. 4. The Paris store on Rue de Sevres has a cafe, a bookstore, and the only petty here specific room. 5. In 2001, Hermes was one of the first luxury businesses to open an e-commerce site. 6. Grace Kelly and Jane Birkin inspired the names of the iconic Kelly and Birkin bags. 7. The distinctive Hermes orange boxes were the first cream with a gilt edging simulating pigskin, then mustard with a brown edging. Due to a scarcity of the original materials following World War II, the first orange boxes were created. 8. Hermes won the packaging Oscar in 1994 for its folding orange boxes. There are currently 188 different sizes of orange boxes available. 9. The thread required to make 1,000 Hermes cares is the same as the distance between the Earth and the Moon. 10. Pierre Alexis Dumas, the company's artistic director, is a sixth generation member of Hermes' founding family. Via business of fashion, Dumas was not just appointed artistic director. In reality, he has stated that his father, Jean Louis Dumas, the previous chairman of Hermes, made him battle for the role to prove he was the perfect match. 11. Pierre Alexis Dumas established the Fondation d'Entreprise Hermes in 2008. President. It continues to encourage the advancement of traditional craft skills, the creative arts, education and training, and environmental concerns. Through Hermes Fondation d'Entreprise. In conclusion. The Hermes logo was designed after World War II. It is a direct reference to the company's origins as a manufacturer of carriage accoutrements for the aristocracy. As a luxury goods company, the symbolism is rather straightforward in that it wishes for its customers to equate its naturally sourced items with high class, money, elegance, and attention to detail. In this day and age, the use of bright orange may appear to be a deliberate design choice. It is so daring that it had to be chosen to stand out from the crowd. Instead, the corporation was forced to make the design decision because of post-World War II shortages that made their original hue impractical.